Hey, before we get into today's episode, I just wanna let you know that the merch shop, multilevelmerch.shop is finally up and running again. Make sure you go to multilevelmerch.shop to check out all the new designs. We're also donating 50% of all of our profits to the Trevor Project as well. So please make sure to check it out. If you see something you like, make sure to give it a purchase. Thanks so much and enjoy today's episode. Ah, millennials. Well, they seem to be the bane of nearly everyone's existence. They'll never know what it was like to walk to school uphill both ways in the snow, nor will they ever have the experience of living a life without technology. Well, most of them anyway. Don't get me started on the participation trophies. That ruined them, obviously. Yes, millennials are so clearly spoiled, entitled, lazy brats. At least that's what most news stories, politicians, and pretty much everyone over the age of 35 will have you believe. And yes, by the way, over the age of 35 is millennials. I believe millennials, like the early part of millennials are now in their forties. So that's a thing. But truth be told, millennial slander seems to be coming from all sides and all generations. For the older generation, those who grew up through terrorist attacks, recessions, crippling student debt, and multiple wars are just the worst. They've been accused of nearly killing all chain restaurants, fabric softeners apparently, and of course, the American dream. And I know, how dare the generation that owes 50% more student debt than the one before them delay having kids or houses until they can afford it? How evil of them! Meanwhile, the generation faces ridicule and slander from the younger generation too. The side parts, the skinny jeans, everything millennials do is just so chuggy. And that includes the word doggo. Do you guys remember that little controversy on TikTok where it was like, when I walk my doggo and I have a feeling or something like that? I don't remember that. It was not really my side of TikTok. I'm too depressed for that. (laughs) While the older generations seem to think millennials are doing too much to change the world or kill all of the industries they once enjoyed, Gen Z seems to think millennials aren't doing enough. A Vice article made this point abundantly clear when it interviewed Gen Z about their perception of the generation above them. They say millennials moan a lot and don't do anything. They claim that millennials are obsessed with the nine to five working environment and put glitter over things. Everything seems to be the exact opposite of what the older generation is saying. So essentially it's an attack on all fronts and millennials lose every single one of them. Millennials are either doing too much or doing too little all at the same time. Either way, they are certainly responsible for almost everything that seems to go wrong apparently, and they are just the generational punching bag, whether you are an older generation or a younger generation from millennials. Now, of course, this type of intergenerational conflict isn't anything new. Even Aristotle made fun of younger people in Greece, saying things like, they think they know everything and are quite sure about it. Does that sound familiar? But with millennials, this seems rather personal. Article after article accuses the generation of an unneeded massacre of industries and ideals. The kids today, even though all millennials are full-blown adults now, that rhetoric runs really deep though of the whole kids today thing. For over a decade, they've been accused of specifically killing, and yes, the word killing is used as in willfully putting to death, nearly everything past generations have apparently worked so hard to build from major industries like commercial travel to more niche industries like napkins. So what is really going on here? Are millennials just ruthlessly ousting everything people once found dear and watch the world burn for enjoyment? Or is there actually a little bit more to this story? Why are millennials killing everything? Hello and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati and today we'll be diving into something a little bit different. Instead of looking at a corrupt company, charity, or politician, we're gonna be taking a look at the seemingly most hated generation to ever step foot on this earth, millennials. Is the generation as murderous and unconcerned with the world around them as they seem, or are they just horribly misunderstood? That's what we're gonna dig into today. Now, I'm sure you've seen the headlines once or twice. Hell, someone even made a whole TikTok grouping them together. It's called Millennials Kill Everything. From American cheese, Applebee's, and the American dream consisting of a white picket fence and two kids, everything is murdered by millennials in cold and malicious blood. Before we get into that though, who exactly are millennials? Because there definitely seems to be some confusion with generations as to who falls into what category. First off, generations aren't technically solid or naturally occurring things. They're a social construct. And if that wording sounds familiar, it's because it's the same word used to describe things like race or gender. 
Simply speaking, social constructs are things developed to make grouping people easier so we can study them or make society a little more nice and neat. It changes depending on some cultures or where you are in the world. For the purpose of today's episode, we're going to talk about millennials from the North American point of view. The biggest age grouping in history, and that's right, they took over the boomers, so haha, suck it. They usually consist of anyone born between the years of 1981 to 1996, at least according to Pew Research. Now, obviously I'm describing and we're going over my findings today, but I just wanna make something clear, at least my opinion, because technically I also belong in the millennial category, but now there's like this subsection of grouping of people that isn't, I think, official called like zillennials, even though I fucking hate that word. I think I technically belong in zillennial, but according to this, I'm a millennial. And usually my understanding, at least before going into all the research about this is like an older generation gives birth to a younger generation, but someone who is like one of the first years of millennial could have given birth to someone and that someone could have still been a millennial. I just think the generation is too big and there's a huge like difference between the age group. And it's literally around like 1990 where the switch happens, but that's my opinion. So take it or leave it. But Now that we have the official Pew Research 1981 to 1996 as a millennial, let's go back to the whole, they're killing everything thing. So yes, millennials have been accused of killing a lot of things. Of course, one of the biggest is work ethic. The laziest generation, according to boomers, of course, is trying its best to off the common nine to five workflow that Dolly Parton sang against about three decades ago. And Dolly Parton is most certainly not a millennial. And that song seems to show that even she understands the nine to five labor structure is bullshit, but I digress. Still, the generation has been blamed for changing the working way of life and how it has been in the United States for as long as everyone can remember. Instead of going into the office every day, they ask for at least one day to work from home. And I know, (gasps) how terrifying. Rather than strict office hours, they opt for flexibility. Why set certain times when you could just work whenever? Right from your couch with your dogs, cats, or other companions like maybe your hamsters. Okay, I know Allie wrote that line in there. And in case you're wondering, I'm not just name dropping people randomly. Allie is one of my writers and she's the one who in the Dodo video, I mentioned that she has hamsters. So I know that was you, Allie. That's cute though, I like it. In fact, 77% of millennials say having flexible work hours would make them more productive. Considering that generation will be about 75% of the workforce in about three years, people are saying they're going to officially kill the nine to five by 2030. And let's fucking hope they do because my God, it sucks. For some who grew up with this working tradition, the thought of having flexible, less suffocating work hours is crippling. But studies have shown that people with more flexibility are happier and by the way, more productive too. So if it's true that millennials are killing this, then they deserve a thank you basket, not a bunch of people screaming at them, calling them entitled. Something else millennials have been accused of killing is diamonds. The diamond industry is struggling to entrap, uh, sorry, I meant market towards the generation and is stumped about why this would be happening. I mean, they say diamonds are a girl's best friend, aren't they? At least that's what the diamond industry spent millions of dollars marketing to make people believe for decades. In 2016, The Economist asked in a tweet, why aren't millennials buying diamonds? Ah, yes, the age old question. Of course, this was met with a bunch of replies saying things like, you mean besides the crippling debt or because you can't live in a diamond or eat a diamond. Of course, those would be sensical answers. Diamonds are expensive and millennials can't afford them. Have you seen what the going wages are right now in the US? Then there's also the pesky little problem of diamond mining being a notoriously harmful practice for both the people mining them and the environment. And you know, there's that little thing too. To millennials, it's not worth it. And for the first time, they have other options like buying lab made diamonds, which by the way, are absolutely lovely and there's no shame in that game. So sure, maybe millennials are actually killing that industry, but can we say that it didn't deserve it? Like, I don't know, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world personally. Clearly, we can't forget the big one, the biggest victim of all millennial onslaught, the American dream, the two and a half kids, which I don't know how you get a half a kid, but all right, the white picket fence and the life of luxury that's been pushed onto the American people for decades. The whole pull yourself up by your bootstraps, work hard, play hard, and all the cringy sayings that have been said forever and ever and ever. Millennials allegedly want nothing to do with it. Of course, that's what the news sources say. The Washington Examiner, we should already be clenching our fists a little bit here with this source, but this article was just so amusing to me that I had to use it. They say that millennials poisoned the American dream. Their chance should be free stuff, not free speech. They want everything for free, even (gasps) healthcare for free. What an atrocity. 
The article does in fact point out that millennials lived worse economically during the recession than many have in the Great Depression, but goes on to say that they're killing the American dream purely because they want political correctness and free things. Don't you love when people get so close to the point and then just sprint right past it? But yes, millennials are delaying home ownership, children and marriage more than any previous generation. And it's dumbfounding to some people and they treat it like it's the end of the fucking world when it's really not. But it might not be that millennials are killing the dream, they just might be reinterpreting it. When the phrase was coined by James Truslow Adams in 1931, it wasn't meant to be the picture perfect lifestyle people equate it to. Instead, it just meant that people should have opportunities to live a good life regardless of where they fall economically. And if we take that definition, I would argue that millennials are actually reviving the American dream for what it was originally meant to be. Enjoy things you want to and eat the fucking avocado toast if it makes you happy, my God. Still, this generation is constantly accused of killing everything out of pure spite and just to watch the world burn. But is that what's actually going on? And is there more to the story? Well, simply put, yeah, there is. The truth is these days, the term millennial has become quite a dirty word, but honestly, something doesn't add up. The way millennials are often portrayed in the media, it almost feels as there's like a conspiracy against them. Like we've been the victims of some sort of decades long smear campaign. And while I don't typically espouse conspiracy theories, maybe the reason it feels like there's been a smear campaign against millennials is that, well, in this case, it's kind of true. I guess that doesn't really make it a conspiracy theory that kind of makes it more of just a fact, but I digress, let's get into it. In the early 2010s, several high profile and often cited editorials emerged that painted the millennial generation as lazy, entitled, narcissistic, antisocial, technology obsessed, and wasteful spenders. Arguably the most influential of these was Joel Stein's 2013 time cover featured entitled the me, me, me generation. This article is famous for popularizing the idea that all millennials have excessively inflated egos and outrageous expectations because they were coddled by their parents. You know, the whole participation trophy trope that we've heard a million and a half times. But just as a quick question, a little food for thought here, who invented those trophies? Because it wasn't the millennials. And I can tell you as a kid, we didn't give a shit about them, okay? When everyone got a fucking ribbon or a little trophy or whatever, we were like, okay, and um, how many years do I have to hold on to this till it's okay to throw away? Like it, it did nothing for anybody. And now they're trying to use it against us. I just find that funny. But anyway, Stein claims that quote, the problem is that when people try to boost self-esteem, they accidentally boost narcissism instead. Eventually that high self-esteem leads only to massive disappointment when the world at large refuses to acknowledge how great you are and how you are ill-equipped to cope with such a devastating revelation. Stein then goes on to assert that the millennial generation's perceived sense of entitlement actually comes from an adaptation to a world of abundance, which provides millennials with options that previous generations never had. All of these options coupled with technology and social media stunt the millennial generation as they put off major life events like marriage, parenthood, home ownership, et cetera, simply because they are paralyzed by too many options. As the article says, quote, what idiot would try to work her way up at a company when she's going to have an average of seven jobs before age 26? This article bolstered the narrative that while millennials may have been set up to fail, they have developed into especially arrogant, lazy, selfish, entitled economic drags and therefore require harsh reality checks to whip them back into shape. And if you think that's an unfair characterization, you're not alone. And don't worry, we'll come back around to rebuttals in a moment here. Another influential piece from 2012 entitled, Why Millennials Are Spending More Than They Earn and Parents Are Footing the Bill, popularized the belief that millennials are overly materialistic and cherish YOLO, which wow, what a throwback, so much that they're willing to overspend to keep up with the Kardashians. To make matters even worse, they're doing so at the expense of their parents, the article claims. Millennials, according to this point of view, develop this attitude because they grew up in a time of insecurity with 9-11 and banks cheating people. So they developed an attitude of who knows what tomorrow will bring. Why not treat myself in case it all comes crashing down to shit? And personally, just my little insert here. What's wrong with treating yourself? What's wrong with loving yourself? What's wrong with taking care of yourself? But I digress, let's keep going. But somewhat contradictorily, millennials are also said to represent the highest percentage of Americans lacking enough money to meet their basic needs. And that's according to a 2012 Boston Globe article entitled Generation Broke. I think this is particularly interesting considering the previous article said millennials spend more than they earn. It seems ironic, but that's only if you think of millennials as being unwilling or too lazy to do what's necessary to earn a good income. 
Instead, you think of millennials as being victims of high expectations and stagnating job markets that force them to work several low paying jobs just to make ends meet, then suddenly all the avocado toast and latte splurges start to make sense. They're inexpensive diversions that millennials can treat themselves to without breaking the bank. And as a matter of fact, I I don't like to bring this up too much anymore because I'm kind of separating from it. Um, You guys know I have a candle shop, Knox and Vesta, and I'm kind of separating myself from it because my sister's kind of taking over instead. So it's not really gonna be like my thing anymore, but I'm really proud of her for doing it. And I started to do some research for her because we were trying to understand the market more because we're gonna be adding fragrance and like fine perfume and stuff like that. Cause that's something she's really invested in. Like I really like the candles and soaps and she really loves fine fragrance. So I'm starting to do more research to understand it. And what I found is that there's something called the lipstick index. And what it essentially is, is when uh, the economy in general is going through a depression or a recession, people tend to buy more lipstick. So lipstick sales skyrocket, particularly in the luxury market. And that's because people want to treat themselves with a little luxury to make themselves feel better in uncertain times. And this lipstick index has been around for decades. This is not a new study or anything. This has literally been around forever and a half. So now if you just switch the lipstick index to the avocado toast index or the latte index, it's literally the same thing. Just reimagine for a new generation. That's it. And I just, anyway, I just found that really interesting, but sorry, I've been going off on a lot of tangents today. I apologize. Let me get back into this. Now to older generations who earned more money or saved or invested when things cost less, these little splurges can seem like frivolous spending. And I'm sorry, I just want a tinge of happiness from my coffee before crying into my student loan bills, which I'm sorry, no more tangents, no more tangents. I swear to God, let's keep going. So yeah, sure. A lot of these articles seem to claim that all of their assumptions about millennials are backed up by studies that prove this is just the worst generation of all time but they seem to be missing out on a few tiny little details that make their revelations just a teeny tiny bit contradictory, dare I say. First, they looked at the millennial generation while it was coming into young adulthood. And this was in the early 2010s when the vast majority of millennial generation would have been in their 20s. And they mistook characteristics of youth as characteristics of generational identity when they hadn't even seen the whole picture yet. According to The Atlantic, quote, it's not that people born after 1980 are narcissists. It's that young people are narcissists and they get over themselves as they get older. It's like doing a study of toddlers and declaring those born since 2010 are generation sociopath. Kids these days will pull your hair, pee on walls, throw full bowls of cereal without even thinking of the consequences. And second, all these slanderous articles framed millennials as if they were deliberately making choices to ruin the economy or at the very least making decisions without consideration for how they would affect the economy. None of them considered that millennials were making decisions based on economic necessity, you know, survival. Regardless though, the far reach of these high profile publications definitely seemed to solidify a bunch of people's beliefs that millennials were simply narcissists that took joy in destroying every industry possible while lounging around on their parents' dime. If we dig a little deeper though, it's not actually that hard to figure out what's really going on. What if, and I know this sounds insane, But what if millennials just couldn't afford to participate in the industries older generations found so near and dear to their hearts? What if it's not the younger generation destroying the older generation's favorite pastimes, but the older generations that destroyed the millennials ability to join in? Wouldn't that just be a crazy little idea? The belief that all millennials are quote, entitled loafers who expected participation trophies simply for getting out of bed has become the predominant narrative. Before long, media outlets and mainstream publications started using the millennials are killing framework to describe floundering industries that were failing to connect with millennials as they were coming of age. The perception of the generation as apathetic freeloaders strengthened the idea that they were simply choosing not to support certain industries. And as the article points out, the murderous language served as a way for reporters to sensationalize stories that otherwise wouldn't have attracted much attention. It looked like Gen X and obviously the baby boomer media found their cash cow and holy shit, did they run with that bitch. Basically, news outlets at the time were taking advantage of a stereotype to make an entire generation a scapegoat for a rapidly changing economy. Opinion editorials proliferated the idea that millennials were to blame for the dire economic circumstances because they all chose to live at home longer, shop at thrift stores for clothes instead of buying from Macy's or Sears, and frivolously hop from job to job instead of committing to a career track for the long haul. Yet none of them thought for even a second to think of why were they doing it? It's just, oh, they're doing it. Therefore, let me make an assumption. 
But the framework became a cliche and the cliche became so widespread that millennials couldn't even attend a family holiday dinner without hearing from their overly opinionated uncle about how their sense of entitlement and their poor attitude was killing his beloved sport of golf. Maybe golf is just boring. Have you ever fucking considered that? And I apologize if anyone does enjoy golf. I've done it once and my favorite part was driving the golf cart. Pretty soon, millennials hit a breaking point. They had enough of being accused of mass murder of all sorts of fucking stupid industries. So millennials fought back against the accusations, pointing out that while they may have been born and raised to have high expectations, they in fact have suffered greatly because of the great recession. A 2018 Federal Reserve study found that millennials are less well off than members of previous generations were at their ages for the first time in history. And according to a 2017 Business Insider article, quote, one in every five households at the time of the recession were severely negatively impacted by the event. And if you think about how the children of that house and how the length and depth of that recession really impacted people, I think you have an entire generation with permanently changed spending habits. And I think this is just a general disclaimer here. I know I'm obviously specifically talking about millennials killing things, but what happened in the great recession also greatly affected the mindset of some of the older like Gen Z people or that like zillennial grouping. It infected you guys too. And I'm sorry that you guys are also going through it and then also kind of get grouped in with millennials because it's just a general hate fest from the older generations. Of course, we can't forget about the whole college lie that was thrust on the younger generation. If you go to school, you too can live a life of prosperity and happiness. No one ever told millennials that going to college would likely bankrupt them. And everyone seemed to forget that tuition has tripled, quadrupled, or more since millennials' parents were in school. For the first time in history, higher education seems to come with shackles rather than an elevator, and millions of people in the younger generation are strapped with crippling debt. Yes, studies do find that millennials who went to college wind up making more money than those that didn't they are also far less likely to live in poverty. But those who went to college are also strapped with debt that makes it hard to make any type of big purchase, like a house or having a child. In fact, about half of the millennials who went to college say it wasn't worth it. And personally, I'm in that camp. I fully believe college is not for everybody. And I'm someone who went to college for a very extended period of time because I struggled a lot through college. I'm not gonna sit here and say college was a breeze. I did graduate with a degree. I don't care about it. I don't actively use it. It doesn't matter. Unfortunately, I'm still strapped with about $40,000 of debt that I'm still gonna have to pay back. And that's just the fucking way life is apparently. And if I could turn back time, I probably would not have gone to college if we're being honest. Additionally, millennials are also aging out of the current youthful generation. And as they do, the next generation of adults, Gen Z, is growing into a massive economic demographic. Trends also indicate that Gen Z looks to continue and even intensify the economic habits of the millennial generation. Essentially, millennials walked so that Gen Z can run and I hope they sprint and get to some sort of great finish line and finish making the changes that millennials just were fricking stifled and couldn't do. So as a heads up to anyone who's mad at millennials, Gen Z will probably be killing things too. But I hope so far we've learned that maybe blaming the generation and not the circumstances isn't the best course of action. The difference though, is that Gen Z has had a chance to observe the disappointment sustained by the millennial generation. So while their spending habits will likely be similar, they're entering the economy with lower expectations and less confidence than millennials did. Gen Z grew up living almost entirely digital lives. So it's likely that many brick and mortar industries as well as social habits and traditions will be permanently impacted. But the reason I bring up this generational passing of the baton is that it helps us confirm that the socioeconomic challenges millennials have faced were really just a result of a changing economy. And millennials just happened to be the generation in place when it happened. And in terms of our purpose here, knowing that the millennial generation isn't to blame for the death throes of so many industries and traditions is crucial to better understanding what the millennials killing things trope is actually about. And before we continue to unpack and kind of finalize the whole trope of millennials killing things, I'm gonna take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. This holiday season, the best deal in wireless can only be found at Mint Mobile. Right now, when you switch to Mint Mobile and buy any three month plan, you'll get another three months for free. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order and activate from home with eSIM while saving tons on phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. 
I've been using Mint Mobile long before the holiday deal. And I have to say, it's the perfect time to switch because if I could switch and get an extra three months for free, I would hop on it. But I've already been a customer of theirs for over two years at this point, which my God, how time flies. All plans, by the way, are gonna come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily and effortlessly with eSIM. Or if you want a new device for a limited time, you'll also get six months of free service when you buy and select device and plan together. For a limited time, buy any three-month Mint Mobile plan and get three more months for free by going to mintmobile.com slash casket. That's mintmobile.com slash casket. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash casket. Your hair is unique, so your hair care should be too. And Function of Beauty makes products that are 100% customizable with ingredients designed and formulated to meet your specific hair goals. And Function of Beauty offers 54 trillion possible formulations. Each one is vegan and cruelty-free with no sulfates or parabens, and you can go completely silicone-free too. All you do is take your hair quiz designed to build your hair profile, you select up to five hair goals, and then you choose your color and fragrance or go dye in fragrance free, and then the formula gets delivered straight to your door. I've previously talked about how I did like a blue color shampoo and conditioner, and obviously like a lot of hydration because I live in Colorado and it's dry as heck out here. And then I did a peach scent because peach scent never comes in the color blue. But right now I'm trying like literally color free, silicone free, like, fragrance free like everything and honestly just as fabulous. So start giving your hair the personalized care it needs. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash casket to take your hair goals quiz and you'll save 20% on your first order when you subscribe. No commitments and you can cancel anytime. Go to functionofbeauty.com slash casket to let them know you heard it from our show and get 20% off your first order. That's functionofbeauty.com slash casket to take your hair quiz and save 20% on your first order. So what is it with the millennials killing things trope? I'd have to guess that the accusations have something to do with the baby boomer generation's failure to understand their unique historical circumstances that are just that, unique. They know what things were like for them, but don't see how it's different for the younger generations. And spoiler alert, boomers inadvertently made it worse. For some insight into this, noted sociologist Carl Mannheim says that an essential function for each generation is to rejuvenate society. What he means by this is each new generation must forget the memories of past generations and shape their own destiny. According to Mannheim, quote, to be able to start afresh with new life, to build new destiny, a new framework of anticipations upon a new set of experiences are things which can come into the new world only through the fact of new birth. So new generations can only properly inherit the world if they cultivate collective personally acquired memories. But in the case of today's younger generations, they've had to contend with something that no generation before the boomers has had to deal with. You see, millennials and Gen Z have had to work against a robust and long living population, as well as an information media complex accentuated by technology and the internet that rigorously preserves the past. This means that it's nearly impossible for younger generations to get away from baby boomers long enough to acquire their own unique generational experience. It almost comes as no surprise then that millennials and Gen Z are treating the boomer generation the same way you'd treat an incessant know-it-all who's always trying to one-up you at every turn. They're just turning away and ignoring them. And honestly, I can see how this rejection of the past, especially when evidence of it is everywhere, can feel like death. And let's face it, when you're anguishing over the fear of death, you're not really in a clear enough headspace to see what's actually going on you've passed down an economic world that younger generations cannot afford to participate in and you're looking to divert the blame. The baby boomers see this looming, even larger generation on the horizon, threatening to overwhelm the world as it grows into adulthood. And they notice that suddenly all the prosperity they knew is rapidly diminishing. And considering all the accusations describing the millennial generation as lazy, self-absorbed, freeloading, and spendthrifts, I can see how you would get angry and blame millennials for everything. Again, this isn't a particularly new phenomenon and generational conflict is pretty common. It's just usually not to the extent it is now. In short, this is merely the tendency of older generations to notice perceived deficiencies in younger ones, then project those perceived deficiencies onto the generation as a whole. But as an influential paper called Kids These Days, Why the Youth of Today Seem Lacking points out, These perceived deficiencies tend to be the result of two basic psychological mechanisms. The first being the tendency to project one's biased memory of one's own life and childhood onto examples of today's youth. And though those rose-colored glasses judge those individuals as deficient by comparison, and the second being that we as a species tend to notice the limitations of others where we ourselves excel. 
What's truly interesting about these mechanisms though, is that the better we see our past or the more we excel at certain traits, the more we tend to see the youth as deficient in those specific areas. For example, very intelligent people will perceive today's youth to be especially less intelligent. Well-read people will especially think today's youth don't like reading. And authoritarian people will think that kids these days are less respectful. Older generations, it seems, also tend to form their opinions of younger generations from their experiences with specific younger individuals. Therefore, judgments passed onto younger generations tend to come from older people with specific strengths to which they are comparing specific other people. So if you have an awkward cousin who's always looking at their phone and never engages with people at family get togethers, maybe you're that person. Well, it unfortunately might also be the reason your uncle thinks that your entire generation is killing face-to-face interaction. And it's not even fully your fault or their fault. Honestly, generational conflict may all simply boil down to the tendency of human beings to think of themselves as better than others and misunderstand the struggles of a younger generation compared to their own. And I know it's hard to put yourself in someone else's shoes, but maybe we should give it a try. As news sources, politicians, and of course, the casual conversations many of you probably had at Thanksgiving seem to all latch onto the narrative that millennials are just the worst generation to step onto this earth with a special inclination to kill every industry and ideal people hold dear, there always seems to be just one little tiny thing missing, consideration. Maybe, and just maybe, millennials aren't doing these things out of spite. I'm sure many people of the most hated generation would love to participate in the American dream of owning a house going out to dinner or using napkins regularly. The sad reality is they can't afford to, either because of money or morality. Some things are just out of the question. Maybe we can cut millennials a little break here. We're all living on this giant rock together with a wide range of expectations, no matter how you age. So maybe we should start acting like it. But with all of that being said, that is where I'm going to end today's episode of The Corporate Casket. And let me know what you thought of today's episode because I know it's a little different from the usual swing of things, but I do hope you enjoyed it all the same. Thank you so much for making it to the end of today's episode. Shout out to all of the patrons over at patreon.com, obviously the ones that are hanging out in the Patreon server as well. You guys are amazing. Love hanging out with everybody. If you want to chat with me outside of these episodes or in the comment section of the YouTube video, make sure to check out my Linktree link. It has links to all of the projects I'm involved in and my social media. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. 